happy Easter Sunday morning. He is risen. He is risen indeed. It is a delight to be with you on this Sunday morning. I wish we could be together in person, but I'm so thankful that we have the opportunity to be together this day. It has been amazing to see how God has expanded Hope Sound Bible Church Children's Ministry during this time. We've had boys and girls who've been listening to our services from all over the United States and even around the world. Today, we have invited some of them to share a greeting with you. Happy Easter, he Mommy. is risen. Feliz Dia de Pascua, Happy Easter. Christ is risen. Christ the Lord is risen today. Happy Easter! Risen. He has risen indeed. Happy Easter! Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. Yes, O Tuile. O Tuile Kandidi. Happy Easter! We'd like to wish you a happy Easter from the Czech Republic. And we're going to say it in the Czech language now. Veselé Velikonoce. We also can we'll say it in the Russian language. We're going to say uh, Jesus has risen. He has risen indeed. Jesus was crest. Happy Easter! Jesus has risen. He is risen indeed. Good morning and happy Easter. Um, we want you to know that we miss you all very, very much. But um, we are praying for you and we can't wait till we can all come back together again. Um, we're going to get started with some prayer and then we're going to start with the rest of Junior Church. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you for especially what today means, dear Lord. We're so grateful for a Savior who came to this earth to die for our sins when he didn't have to. Pray that you would keep your hand upon the world today and everything that's going on, dear Jesus, and just keep your hand upon us throughout the rest of this day in this service, dear Lord. We love you so much, and we want to go on and serve you in your name. Amen. Today we started this in our family a few years ago and we pull out these eggs every year to help us remember 
the real meaning of Easter. So we're going to read the book and do the eggs today just like we do in our family and we are so happy for you to join in with us. Why do we celebrate Easter and what does it really mean? Is it the bright colored eggs and baskets or the beginning of a flower filled spring? Easter is a time for beginnings, a time for fresh new starts. It's a time for us to remember the true king of our hearts. It's a time for us to thank him. It's a season for us to praise, to celebrate the Lord our God who knows each one of our days. Yet Easter is much more than just one single day. It's the celebration of life. It's Resurrection Day. This egg tells a story of the world's most holy week, and it serves as a reminder of the hope and love we seek. Let this egg bring you closer to the man we call God's son, because Jesus gave his life for us. It is through him our salvation was won. The Easter story egg will start the day Jesus rode into town and finish it with the amazing day that his body could not be found. Each smaller story egg will tell the importance of each day. Remember our Lord Jesus, give thanks to him and pray. Palm Sunday. And you can see the palm branch on our egg. Jesus traveled to Jerusalem 70 miles at least. His friends came along to help him celebrate the Passover feast. As Jesus got closer to town, what in the world did he see? The people had covered the road with palm branches from a tree. In he rode on his donkey. He came in the name of the Lord. When Jesus made this humble entrance, the, the crowd cheered and roared. The people had heard of his miracles. They longed to hear what he'd say. They waited with excitement. Their clothing paved his way. The people shouted, what did they shout? Hosanna! They cried, please save us now. They wanted him to be their king. They all knelt down and bowed. And the Bible says, blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. On Palm Sunday, we remember the Lord Jesus is the king. Praise him for all his goodness and the hope he always brings. This Sunday story egg reminds us how Jerusalem honored God's son. He is the vine and we are the branches. Through him, our victory is won. All right, Harrison, can you open up the Palm Sunday egg and let's see what's the next day. On Monday, we have the House of Prayer Monday. Jesus came into the temple, Jerusalem's House of Prayer. He was surprised by all the people and upset by what he found there. There were lots of buyers and sellers. It had become a marketplace. The temple used to be holy, but now it was a disgrace. Jesus knocked over the tables. He sent the sellers away, but little did he know that his fate was sealed that day. The priests did not like him. They were afraid of his teachings. He threatened their authority, but the people liked Jesus preaching. The priests had seen his miracles. He healed the blind and lame. They watched the children praise him. For him, the people came. The leaders started planning. Jesus had made a mess. They now had a reason to blame him. Surely he would confess. When you see this Monday story egg, Think of God's house of prayer. Remember the amazing miracles and the teachings that he shared there. All right, Addie, can you open up the Monday egg? Okay. We'll put our Monday egg right there. And our next egg...
Jesus knew what he needed to do. He went back to the temple. He taught the good news of God and a crowd began to assemble. Jesus taught his followers from morning until night. He taught them truth and obedience. He showed them wrong from right. He taught them with the scriptures read from the Lord's book. He taught them through his stories about how the world should look. He taught them the greatest commandment, life's most valued goal. Love the Lord with all your heart. Love him with all your soul. He thought, taught them to love their neighbors just as they love themselves, to care for the poor and needy and those not like ourselves. The Pharisees asked hard questions. Each tried their tricky best. If his answers were not lawful, they could lead to his arrest. Jesus knew that they were sneaky, yet he answered with the truth. He answered questions with love. He gave the priests no proof. Let this Tuesday story egg show how Jesus taught us love. Remember, you are cherished by your Father up above. The Bible says in 1 John 4, 7, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. All right, Harrison, can you open up our Tuesday egg? Next one. All right, so on this one, we have a beautiful jar, and there's something coming out of the jar. Let's see what happens on Give and Take Wednesday. A woman came to the home of Simon, and she brought a beautiful jar filled with expensive perfume, her most treasured possession by far. She poured the perfume on Jesus, covering him with love. She showed this act of giving, honoring her father up above. The disciples were upset with her. They were confused. They confused her giving with greed. She could have given to the poor or others who were in need. And Jesus replied with gentleness. His words would help them see, you always have the poor to help, but you will not always have me. On this very same confusing day, Judas decided to take 30 pieces of silver, payment for plans he would make. Judas's plans led the priest to find Jesus the very next day. This was an act of betrayal, and for this act, he would be paid. She gave her best to Jesus, a kind and unselfish deed. He took the priest to our Savior, knowing where this act would lead. They both needed Jesus to show them how to live, to guide them in decisions. Should they take or should they give? As you look at the Wednesday story egg, every day when you wake, choose to honor your holy God with each decision that you make. John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world, can you say it with me? That he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. All right, Addie, can you open up the beautiful jar egg? All right, what's on that egg, Addie? Um, it's a table full of people, and this is to remember all right, let's see what it is, okay? So there's Jesus and his disciples. This one's called Last Supper Thursday. For his very last supper, Jesus gathered with his friends. They shared a feast and he explained his time was soon to end. He washed his disciples' feet with a servant's heart. He would love his friends until the end, although they soon would part. I am the way and the truth and the life. Come to the Father through me. He promised to send the Holy Spirit to live in us for all eternity. He taught them to remember him by eating bread and drinking wine. He told them he would be betrayed and by a disciple be denied. He said, do not be troubled. I will send you peace of knowing. Your sadness will be turned to joy. Come, let us be going. He went out into the garden 
And to our God he prayed. He pleaded with the Lord this night to take this cup of suffering away. He knew the time had come. Soldiers were coming soon. He'd be betrayed with a kiss by the light of the evening moon. Jesus was very scared, but he knew this was the way. The soldiers captured and arrested him, and they led Christ away. Let this Thursday story egg remind us, Jesus is the way. Share the good news with your friends and be thankful every day. John 14, 6 says, Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. All right. see on that egg? A cross. It's a cross. This little egg is called Good Friday. Early in the morning, Jesus was bound and led away. He had been charged with lying. The Romans would have their day. Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus replied, you said it. Crucifixion would be his punishment, if God's will, so I accept it. Pilate knew he was innocent and been charged because of envy. Maybe he could save him. Pilate could set one prisoner free. He brought Jesus before the crowd. Shall we let this man go? But the priests had convinced the people. So what did the people shout? No. The soldiers were mean to Jesus. They made him wear thorns as a crown. He carried his cross to Golgotha. His cross was then placed in the ground. They nailed the Messiah upon it. They hung him there to die. They know not what they are doing, Father. Forgive them, Lord, he cried. This is Jesus, King of the Jews, a sign above him read. It is finished, were the final words that our Savior said. He knew his death would happen, yet the earth began to shake. He paid the price for our sin. He suffered for our sake. As you look upon this Friday story egg, see the cross as a symbol of love. It represents everlasting life 
as a gift from your Father above. And John, John, thir, John 19, 30 says, when he had received the drink, Jesus said, it is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. But guess what, friends? That's not the end of the story. That's not the last egg. There's another one. Can you open that up? Oh, sorry, it's Addie's turn. What do you see inside, Addie? Some dinosaurs? No. What is what does this one look like? Can you show the friends what that one looks like? So Does it have a picture on it? It's gray and it's it represents just gray. It's gray. It's just gray. It's not very beautiful. It's just kind of plain. It doesn't have a pretty picture on it. Let's read about Holy Saturday. Jesus had been wrapped in linen and covered in perfume. His friends prepared his body and they laid him in a tomb. Imagine a very large stone, far too heavy to roll away. This rock was placed at the entrance of Jesus' tomb that day. Soldiers were ordered to guard the cave where Jesus laid. He had claimed he would rise again. This made the priests afraid. We will never know of the miracles that happened in his tomb. God was bringing Christ to life. He would rise again very soon. The Lord tells us he is our rock. He gives us our unconditional love. He is our strength and our fortress. He's our father up above. Hold this story, Saturday story egg. It looks much like a stone. With the Lord Jesus as your friend, you'll never be alone. John 1, 9 says, The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. All right. Let's open the last egg. You ready? What's inside? Can you hold it up and show them? It's empty. As the new day was dawning, the trees began to sway. An angel of the Lord appeared and rolled the stone away. Friends went to visit his tomb. They brought burial spices of plenty. But when they arrived at the cave, they discovered that his grave was empty. When his friends entered the room, they found burial clothes of linen. He had done just as he had promised. Yes, Jesus had risen. Jesus died for our sins. He paid the ultimate price. Now his kingdom is our present. He has given us eternal life. That heavy rock couldn't hold him. Jesus needed to be free. He conquered death to save us, to save both you and me. Let this egg remind, empty egg remind you of the tomb that was found bare. Although his body is gone, he can be found everywhere. He is in the blooming flowers and the emerging butterflies. He is in each and every raindrop and the clouds up in the sky. Easter is Jesus, raised from the dead. He's our hope and our joy, our life's daily bread. Jesus arose from the grave to him be glorified. For Jesus has risen. Yes, Jesus is alive. 1 Peter 1, 3 says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Happy Easter, friends. We hope that you celebrate um, the true meaning of Easter today, and we are so thankful that Jesus died for your sins. He died for my sins. Happy Easter.
Last week, when we ended our story, remember, the sky had gotten dark and Jesus died. His disciples put him in a tomb. It must have been dark in there. In fact, the whole situation was just pretty dark. But it doesn't end there. Today, we get to hear the most exciting part of the best story that there is. Are you ready for the next part of the story? Grab your seek and find paper. Once again, we're gonna find little clues in the picture that help us tell today's story. The first thing you're looking for is a stone. Go. Good work on finding that stone. You know, the stone reminds us of the tomb that Jesus was laid in. His disciples took his body off of the cross and went and put him in a tomb, kind of like a cave dug out of a rock. And then to keep his body safe and so no one would steal it, they put a huge stone over that. I mean, a big one. Sometimes, eh, feel pretty strong, but I couldn't even move this rock. It weighed between two and three thousand pounds. Whoa! It was a huge stone covering that tomb. Whew. Just thinking about that makes me feel tired. Ugh. But you know, that wasn't the only thing that was keeping Jesus in the tomb. The next clue that you need to look for? A sword. That sword reminds us the Romans were worried. They were afraid that someone would come and steal Jesus' body 
and claim that he had risen from the dead. They wanted to keep that tomb safe and guarded and make sure nothing happened. So they sent some of their best guys there. These were big bad dudes. You didn't want to mess with a Roman soldier. They were there to protect and guard the tomb. But as big and tough as those guys were, something happened that made them run like little Frady cats. You know what it was? Look for your next clue. It'll help us tell the story. It's a lightning bolt. That lightning bolt reminds us or tells us that lightning bolt reminds us of the next part of the story. God sent an angel. Now, we think of angels as beings that come and help us. They're nice, they're helpful, and to God's people they are. But remember, to people who are opposing God, who are bad, angels can be pretty scary. As tough as those Roman soldiers were, they were no match for God's angel. In fact, when the angel appeared, he was so bright, like lightning, the Bible tells us, and his clothes were white and bright and shiny. Those soldiers turned to run, but they were so scared that they just fainted and fell right there. Yeah, they fell right down on the ground. Well. The angel came and he rolled away that great big stone. Pretty amazing, huh? There's one more picture that's going to help us tell the rest of this story. You're looking this time for a bottle of perfume. Go. It had been three days since Jesus had died. And while all that happened, the angel, the Roman soldiers rolling away the stone, that more, same morning there were three ladies, Jesus' mother Mary and a couple of other ladies, were coming to the tomb with that bottle of perfume to anoint his body. They had no idea how they would get into the tomb with that great big rock there, but they thought they would just come try and see what might happen. But can you imagine their surprise when they got there? The tomb was already open and the angel was sitting on that great big rock. He spoke to them and said, don't be afraid. I know who you're looking for. Jesus, the one who was crucified, the one who died. He is not here. He's risen. Come and see where they laid his body. Wow. Jesus is alive. Soldiers couldn't keep him in the grave. A big rock couldn't keep him in the grave. Not even death could keep him in the grave. And boys and girls, the amazing thing is, when we let Jesus come and live in our hearts, that same power that raised Jesus from the dead works inside of us. He's alive, hallelujah. Can you say it with me? He is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen.
Boys and girls, remember our Easter greeting? Let's try it out again. He is risen. He is risen indeed. <laughs> he is risen. He is risen indeed. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Yes, he is, Diggory. And uh, happy Easter to you. Oh, happy Easter, happy Easter. What a wonderful day. Isn't it? Oh, this is the day we celebrate that Jesus came back to life again. It's wonderful. I'm so glad to see you here today. And I thought maybe, um, do you think you could help us out this morning? Um, I don't think you have too many options. Well, <laughs> thanks. Uh, it would be awfully kind of you. So, um, Let's say our verse together. Do you think you could help our boys and girls learn our verse for the day? Oh, I think I can handle it. I thought so. It comes from John chapter 11, verse 25. Let's say it together. Jesus said, I, I am, am the, the resurrection, resurrection and, and the life. life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. Mr. John. Yes. Who's that? Whosoever, dude. Oh, whosoever. That means absolutely anyone. That means me too? Oh, yes. Anyone who believes in Jesus Christ can live forever. Yeah, because Jesus came back from the dead. He gives us his new life. That's pretty amazing. That's it's an for... awesome verse, Mr. John. Yes, it is. I love that verse. It's because of Jesus' life, anybody can have eternal life. Let's say it again. Jesus said, I, I am, am the, the resurrection, resurrection and, and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. Oh, great work, Diggory. I have an idea. Uh, what, what idea? Well, sometimes we call out different groups of people to say the verse. We don't have a lot of kids here in the room, but they can join on while we're saying this. So I'm going to call out a couple of special groups and see if they can say the verse. How about that? Okay, let's try. Yes. All right. Um, will all of the dogs say our verse for today? Mr. Don. Yes. I only see one of them. Well, you can go ahead and say the verse, Diggory. Ah. Uh, John 11, 25. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. Oh, great job, Diggory. Oh, shall we try another group? Uh, this time, let's see. Um, would anyone who has a name that starts with, uh, with D say the verse? Mr. John. Yes. I'm starting to see a pattern here. Really? I don't see too many people in here. It's true, but uh, your name starts with D, doesn't it? Yeah, that's the pattern. So you get to say the verse. All right, let's say it again. Maybe the boys and girls will help me at home. John 11:25. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. Wow, great job. You want to know a secret? Tell me. Um, I think somebody back here is cheating. Oh, yeah? I, I think so. But, hey. <laughs> They're learning the verse. Well, 
<laughs> you might be right. Could we say it one more time? And uh, this time, maybe everybody who's wearing, uh, let's say, blue could say the verse. Oh, Diggory, you have blue on. Oh, look at that. <laughs> well, Funny how that works. I do too. So I'm going to join you on this one. Let's say it one more time. John, John 11, 11 25. 25. Jesus, Jesus said, I am the resurrection, resurrection and the life. Whosoever believes in me, though he die, yet, yet shall he live. live. Thanks so much for helping us out, Diggory. Oh, it's been fun. You have a wonderful Easter. You too. He oh. is risen. He is risen indeed. Have a wonderful week, kids. Happy Easter, friends. I hope you're having a wonderful day celebrating our risen Savior. Last week, we talked about Jesus being crucified on the cross and how just how awful it was. But today, we're talking about the best part. We're talking about what happens after. So today, we kind of all mostly know the story of Easter, right? We know that Jesus was hurt and killed and it was, it was horrible. It was just awful. But sometimes it's easy to kind of skip over that part because we know we can flip a few pages ahead and see the ending. And we know it's the best ending to the best story ever. Jesus rose from the dead. He conquered death and hell and was victorious and came back to save us. So even though those awful things happened, we still celebrate Easter because we know Jesus did it for us. Each one of us, me and you and everybody. But that first Easter, the Christians didn't know what was going to happen. They didn't have the story in front of them. They were living it. So Jesus' friends, and his brothers and his mom, they didn't know. They thought Jesus was gone. They thought he was gone forever. And they were heartbroken. So Jesus died on a Friday. The next day was the Sabbath, nobody could work. The next day was Sunday. So Sunday morning, Mary Magdalene and some other ladies went to the tomb. They didn't go to see Jesus raised from the dead. They thought he was dead forever. What they were going to do was something they did in Bible times when somebody died. Seems a little strange to us now, but back then, if someone you loved died, you would take really nice, expensive oils and anoint their body, and then you would sprinkle these precious spices on them, and you would wrap them with these special white linen strips of cloth. And it was it was a way of caring for this person who had died. It was a way of showing love and respect to them, it was a wonderful thing to do. But when Mary Magdalene and the other ladies got to the tomb, what did they find? It was empty. The stone had rolled away. There was an angel. So Will and Rose are going to help me do a sort of object lesson to talk about that a little bit. Hi. What are you making today? Resurrection rolls. Resurrection rolls. Oh, those sound yummy. Okay. I see you holding a marshmallow, William. What does that represent? Jesus' body. Jesus' body. All right, what are you going to do? Put it in the butter. That melted butter looks kind of oily. What does that represent? The oil that they put on his body. That's right. They anointed Jesus' body with oil, or they were going to try. And then what's the next step? You put it in the cinnamon. Cinnamon? That's a spice. What does the cinnamon represent? The spices that they put on his body. The spices they were going to put on his body. Yes, you can taste one cinnamon. All right, after they were going to be done with the spices and the oil, what was next? They wrapped them in white clothing. Right, white linen cloths. That's right. This is so Excellent. yummy. It's so yummy. <laughs> All right, well, let me get a good look at what you're doing here. Let me see. Ooh. All right, put it in the pan. Oh, you guys, those look so good. I'm anxious to see what they look like when they're done baking. Me too. Good job. Yeah. You guys, these turned out so cute. What do you notice I added to them? The crosses. The cross to represent the cross Jesus died on. And now that they've baked, 
they represent Jesus' tomb. <laughs> Are you guys excited? All right, why don't you try one? Take a great big bite. Mm. What do you notice about those rolls? What's inside? Nothing. Nothing? They're empty. They're empty? But we put a marshmallow in there. Let me see, Rose. Let me see. Oh, they are empty. William, let me see inside yours. Wow, what a messy object lesson. There is still cinnamon sugar on my floor, but Rose had fun eating it. I wanted to show you when they're all done, kind of does sort of look like a tomb if you use your imagination. And then there's the cross of Christ on top. The best part, when you open it up, it's empty, just like Jesus' tomb. Of course, it wasn't completely empty when Mary Magdalene got there. There was an angel waiting, and he told her to go tell the disciples that Jesus was alive. Can you imagine their joy when they heard that news? Oh my goodness, it must have been amazing to see. And the message that Jesus is still alive is a message we can still share today. There is a lost and broken world out there that needs to hear that Jesus is alive and that he reigns king above all. It's a beautiful message. I hope you have a wonderful Easter. I love you and I miss you and I am praying for you. See you soon. It's that time of week again. You know what it means. And it's Easter time. We're all waking up saying he's risen, he's risen indeed. So it's appropriate to make some noise and celebration this morning. So boys and girls, you know how it goes. Good morning! Oh, we've missed you so much. And as I said this morning, such a special morning, an incredible morning celebrating Jesus' death and his resurrection, him rising from the dead. And this morning, I have an incredible object lesson for you. What makes it amazing? You do. This week, you get to do the object lesson. Right there at your home, you get to do an object lesson, give you something to do while you're cooped up at your house to be able to watch how life comes about. Mr. John has had for weeks now, you may remember, it's been a while, he's had flowers and things growing up here. We've made this beautiful garden. But did you know that gardens have to start off with death? Have you ever imagined that? Everything you see that grows, from flowers to the vines, they all start out as little itty bitty seeds. Have you ever thought what happens to those seeds? To be able to get flowers, to be able to get any of the plants we eat, anything like that, that seed has to go into ugh, nasty dirt. It's got to go down and be isolated by itself down in the ground, lonely, dark, and then it has to die off. As the seed dies off, it gives life from inside out. Once the roots start, if you look, if you pull it up and you look, sooner or later that seed's no longer there. It gave up itself to make the plant. Sometimes people ask, why do Christians celebrate something so dark? Jesus dying on the cross and all the awful things that happened to him? Well, this morning that's we're getting to that part of the story. The fact that Jesus, like a seed, he had to die. That human body had to die and go through loneliness, darkness, all sorts of awful things. Why? So he could rise again and not just bring himself back to life, but give me and you life. Beautiful life in him. That's what we're celebrating today. So here's our object lesson this week. Any of you locals who have gotten your papers and such for the crafts this week. You should have gotten a bag something like this. It's dirt, nasty. Hopefully your parents do not kill me for this. It's just a little bit, it won't get too dirty. You have a cup and you have a bag with seeds. Now all these seeds are different. Some are small, some are big, but they all should give you flowers of 
varying sizes, beautiful flowers. So what you're going to do is quite easy. You're gonna take that soil, you're going to fill up, oh, maybe about halfway in your cup. And you can, you younger ones especially, you can have your moms and dads help you with this. Then you're gonna take those seeds. These are tiny ones, so I'm not gonna to try to pick them up. I'm just going to gently dump them down in the soil. And once they're down in there, put the remainder of the soil in, cover them up, make sure they're covered nice and neat. And then you're gonna put just a little bit of water in. All you wanna do is have enough water that you can feel that that dirt is wet. And that's what you're gonna do. You're gonna put this cup in the sun somewhere where it can get plenty of sun and have your parents help you remember Daily, you're gonna check that soil and you're gonna put just enough water in. You don't want a lot of water. Just enough to keep that dirt nice and damp. Now, what you're gonna see is for the first few days, in fact, for probably a couple weeks, you're gonna wake up and you're gonna run in and you're gonna say, ooh, 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 it's just dirt. And while it's just dirt, I want you to remember this object lesson. I want you to think about the things that happened to Jesus. The time he spent in the tomb all by himself in that darkness, the death he went through. Think about that seed that's down in there that you put in there. It's down in there all alone, down in all that dirt. Oh, you wouldn't want to be down there, but that seed's down there doing something. It's not just down there to be down there. Jesus didn't go through everything he went through on the cross just to suffer, just to go through it. He went through that for a purpose because through all that, he was bringing life to me and you. And here in a few weeks, if all goes well, one day you're going to wake up and run to that cup and you're going to see a little piece of green start poking up. That means that seed is dying off and that new life is rising. And you can remember for weeks to come why we get so excited Easter morning. You'll remember that the reason we got excited is because the death was over and Jesus rose from the dead and said, no more. He looked at Satan and said, no more. I have conquered sin. I've made a way for every last one of you kids to get back in touch with God, have that relationship, have that eternal life again. It was only through his death that that new life came. And I want you to remember as you watch that plant grow bigger and bigger and you watch those flowers start to form, I want it to be a daily reminder to you of what Jesus did during this time for us. That he had to die, he had to go through all those awful things for you. So that you could have a beautiful, incredible life in him that he could make something out of you more special than you could have ever imagined. And I love that all these seeds ended up being different because all of you are different. Jesus has a special plan just for you, nobody else, just for your life. And if you'll allow him to take your life, if you will, your life die off and you follow his plan for your life, he's going to grow something special. It might not look like anybody else's out there. But it's going to be beautiful because you are special. God created you special. And through Easter, he died to make a way for you to have new life. Hope you have fun growing these flowers. Maybe we can see some pictures later on as you begin to get your flowers. Have a good week this week in God. I'm glad you guys joined us for Children's Church today. I'm going to say a quick prayer for you for this new week that we're about to go through so close your eyes and bow your head with me as we pray dear god thank you for this day thank you for that it's easter and that we celebrate a risen savior jesus i ask that you would please bless the boys and girls who are watching this today help them to feel you around them and your love help them that to know that even though it's a really crazy time right now and we're not really sure and we don't really understand what's going on, we can know that you are in control and you are powerful because a long time ago you rose again from the dead. We love you so much, Jesus, and we're thankful that you're in our lives. Bless our week. Help us to have a great week. 
because you're with us. We love you so much. In your name we pray. Amen. Have a good week. Hello boys and girls, happy Easter. I'm here with Casey again. I just wanted to come and bring you a little poem that I found about Easter and M&Ms. As you hold these candies in your hand and turn them, you will see that M becomes a W and E and then a three. E is for Easter Sunday, the celebration that Jesus lives. M is for mercy and the miracles that he freely gives. Three is to remind us that he rose on the third day, and W, because we worship him, and it's in his name we pray. Matthew 28, 5 says, And the angel answered and said unto the woman, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay. I am so thankful for an empty tomb and a risen Savior, and I hope that each one of you can find him as your personal savior and live for him and serve him and i miss you all so much and i hope to see you soon miss tamber loves you all Bye -bye. hey guys i've been missing getting together every sunday and i hope that you're doing well don't forget about what i suggested a couple weeks ago about doing your best to help around the house and even look for ways to help people where you can hey maybe stuff like mowing a lawn or taking out the trash while not just Hope Sound or even America, but the whole world is dealing with the challenges of this COVID-19 virus, I thought I'd remind you about what we've studied in Revelation and how it relates to what we are seeing with your own eyes today. You may remember we read in Revelation chapter 4, and also saw in that video clip, how Jesus invited his disciple John to come up to the open door of heaven. He said to John, come up here, and I will show you what will take place after this. While Jesus was still on earth with all his disciples, he also told them about the future. As they looked on the amazingly beautiful and grand temple that Herod had just completed, he shocked them by telling them that soon not one stone would be left standing on top of another. And you may remember that we talked in class how Jesus' words were fulfilled less than 40 years later when the Roman army destroyed the Jerusalem and the temple. In the fire of destruction, the gold on the temple melted between the large stone blocks it was constructed from. After the fire, the Romans broke apart each stone to get at the gold. This fulfilled completely what Jesus said to his disciples at that day that they couldn't even imagine how it could happen. Jesus also said to his disciples that day, nation will go to war against one another and kingdoms will attack each other. There will be great earthquakes and in many places people will starve to death and suffer terrible diseases. I believe we are seeing a portion of that prophecy fulfilled right now. In Revelation, we studied again and again that God's purpose in all his judgments that he poured out was to get people to repent. 
I don't believe God allowed this virus to spread around the whole world because he doesn't care. I believe he wants us to wake up and to remind us that without him, we are weak and nothing. So, don't be afraid at this time. We saw that in Revelation 19 that all the armies of the world that the Antichrist assembled to try and fight against Jesus were defeated by just the words, like a sword from his mouth. He is the victorious one. Satan has no chance. However, each of us needs to do what we need to do to be ready to do what Jesus calls us to in order to be right with him and to stand with him on the winning side. So I pray that each one of you will say yes to anything that he asks of you and walk in obedience and the day-by-day -day relationship with him. So... Hello class, happy Easter. We're so glad that you can meet with us online. Uh, we have a few helpers here with us. We're going to sing Up From the Grave He Arose that so many enjoy, from our class enjoy. We're going to sing the first verse. So I want everybody to sit down. And then when we get to the course, Up From the Grave, everybody's going to jump up. All right, so here we go. Low in the grave he lay, Jesus my Savior, waiting the coming day, Jesus my Lord. Up from the grave he arose, with a mighty triumph for his foes. He arose a victor from the dark domain, and he lives forever with the saints to reign. He arose, he arose, hallelujah, Christ arose. The Savior came to save us. The Savior came to save us. He came to give us life. He came to give us life. The Savior came to free us. The Savior came to free us. He left his throne on high. He left his throne on high. He said, Believe in me. Believe in me. He said,
Just one more quick reminder, our talent show is coming up next week. Don't forget to ask your mom or dad to send in a video of your talent. That needs to be in to us by Wednesday, April 15. We'll get the video put together and share that with you next Sunday. We're looking forward to seeing your amazing talents. Have a wonderful week and a blessed Easter. He is risen indeed.